terms of like Portland, Westbrook, the greater metropolitan area, um, it's a beautiful community. The community has really created what Maine is today um, from working jobs to just the culture, um, diversifying Portland. And a lot of that isn't acknowledged, but I think we acknowledge it within the community. And I mean, I just, I love the people I grew up with, um, the people I went to high school with, always motivating me to do better um, and consistently being my inspiration. As you meet people and you meet the communities and stuff like that, you grow to like understand who you are your identity and then fight for identity for like for a lot of racial causes and like justice causes and stuff like that. So knowing who you are has been my biggest struggle but as time went by and you know I'm getting old now. So I've learned I've learned to like myself and understand who I am and why I'm doing this. I think when you come here as an immigrant and refugee you deal with again a lot of culture shock and imposter syndrome and navigating these systems where they are created for us, but they don't accommodate us because we weren't involved in the process of making them. Whatever I do, because I have not chosen my exact profession yet, but whatever profession I get, the only concern I have in my mind is I'm not just doing it for myself, because it's the community that brought me up, it's my family, my friends, because if I just do it for myself and then just move out the hood, for example, and then just go, that's just me being selfish. So I have to acknowledge that I did not do this alone. I did this with the people and the community behind me. Growing up in like an African community, um, there's gossip obviously that goes around all the time, Kalam, um, and it really does impact your relationship with people and it, I don't think like our parents understood how much it impacted us like as kids and developing the necessary relationships we need with people in our community. Um, so like I've had this conversation with like my mom, even my aunties, like we need to do better not only for us, it's not us anymore, it's like the younger kids who need each other. We got it, we got it as long as we got each other, so. We didn't have like a big Nepalese community here, so I feel really, really happy to represent the culture. Uh, over the past few years, I've seen like uh, the community growing, and then whenever I can, I uh, get to help help the people who move from like uh, other parts of the U.S., uh, like especially Nepalese people or people who move from Nepal. It feels really, really awesome. You know to be a to be a part of that i'm the first college graduate in my family so i guess that counts as something <laughs> and uh, personally i feel like uh, education is like one of those tools which could be really really useful to tackle those kind of social problems and if we work hard on the field personally for me i'm in a biological sciences field so i could be working more with like uh, uh, public health crisis um, and I am certain there are people who are working on the other social problems like uh, housing or homelessness. I don't feel like I'm in any kind of position to give anybody advice but from my personal experience what I would say is like uh, keep working on like on whatever you are interested just keep working on and one day it'll it'll be worth it. My religion is my community and it felt like I'd never left Iran because I have my community here. Me and my friends, I always reach out to them to go for a nature walk, which leads to a deeper, deeper and meaningful conversation and we build stronger relationship together. So then nature help definitely helps to build a stronger community. I like technology and data, so it helps I can find a way to help my community by data and I work at Office of Main Refugee Services and I, uh, I'm a database engineer there and I help in a way pulling the data and reporting it to the government helps our, our <clears throat> helps our population to grow in, in Maine. We all have a sense of understanding that we are all humans and we all came from the same dust and we all from, living on this earth together so we should take care of each other and the planet that we can have a better future for our children and humanity.
when we had a Muslim holidays such as Eid, it wasn't a thing that everyone celebrated in school, so it wasn't marked on our on our calendars. I feel like if uh, American students are able to have celebrate Christmas um, and Easter and other holidays, I feel like that we should incorporate Muslim holidays as well. So I'm doing a few things right now. I'm doing a mentoring program with Gateway. Um, I work um, as a mentor. Um, when I started that, um, I think a few months ago, um, I also work with the Afghan community, so I help Afghans who um, are struggling in this society um, and in this country. Um, the other thing that I'm hoping to do uh, is work as a community health worker. Um, I'll be doing that soon as well. Um, I'll be visiting Afghan families and I'll be doing home visits and working on a research project with them. The advice that I would have for the kids, the new Afghan kids that have arrived, um, is to always stay committed and motivated in what you hope to succeed in in the future. If they're committed and they're motivated, they'll always succeed in whatever they want to accomplish in life. I was a kind of shy, I, I kind of like reserved. I didn't do too much stuff until my junior year of high school when I had a conversation with my guidance counselor and she kind of encouraged me to like join a club, a sport, um, which I did uh, join cross country and that kind of helped me kind of uh, integrate myself to like something to do outside of school and running was that thing and um, I kind of started loving it that I went to college and also ran in college. I went to USM. Uh, my dream is to work at a college uh, as an athletic trainer. I would love to work in Maine, um, some, some college in Maine. I see a lot of um, diversity, a lot of community with diverse ideas just coming together and working uh, to excel Maine to a higher um, uh, position. For a long time, especially when I was like in high school and middle school, finding anybody that could like help me with like college or just getting where I wanted to be. For the longest time, I didn't know what I wanted to do because I didn't see a lot of people of color, or people who look like me in different places of power or different places um, that I thought found like interesting. So gradually I had to kind of um, put myself at those tables and find resources for myself. Um, so that's kind of one of the reasons why I like being helpful or like find, like being involved in the community because I don't want my siblings or kids like that are younger than me have to go through that struggle that I did. I, I'm still an introvert and um, I kind of had to push myself out of my comfort zone but um, gradually at USM um, learning so many things about being a leader and just meeting other students who were student leaders and having them push me past my boundaries was very important. I think for me it's just speaking up when there's anything that's wrong or like being able to like make a difference because like at the end of the day like I'm a Somali black woman I don't have a lot of power but the power that I hold I'm hopefully I can use it to make a change or find resources to help people and that's kind of one of the reasons why I started my nonprofit because I saw a way that I could help people and as a youth who's been in Lewiston like my whole life I've made connections and I'm able to make connections and like find resources that other people don't have so being able to do that is something that I like very like hold closely so I think for me being a leader is someone who's able to help people and like make a difference with whatever power that they have even if it's very little. Um, what I like about like the younger generation is that they're not taking no for an answer and they're all pushing boundaries and speaking up so um, what I see in the future is a lot of um, more people of color and youth having their voices highlighted in like in places of power because if you see so many youth are like um, running for office or doing things with like pushing policies, um, doing like letters to the editor than they were before. So seeing so many youth take 
their future in their own hands and not just watching it from the sidelines and like when they don't have a place at the table kind of just finding their own way to build their own table so for me I think um, there's gonna be a lot of youth who are in politics and like different spaces that a lot of youth of color weren't before so being able to see that and see those changes is gonna be pretty great and amazing yeah I am a local Mainer. I grew up in Brunswick, and so I have lived in Maine my entire life. Um, I mean, my struggle is just the fact that we have so little diversity here, and I think it's way more than we had when I was younger. I was the only black student in school um, until like fifth grade, I think, and then there were only two of us. Um, and that was really challenging, I think, just feeling like you know, there were others around that looked like me, that just wasn't the case. So I stuck out a lot and people were, of course, always wondering like where I came from and, you know, saying things that were really hard to hear. And I had to have a lot of conversations, I think, at a younger age about race in a way that I wasn't prepared for because I, you know, I was just a kid. But yeah, I think that's probably the hard, the hardest part is feeling like I was always sticking out and always being stared at. and. I, it still happens now. I mean, we've diversified a lot more, but I'm still like, I still find myself being like the first or the second or the third black woman at, at, of something. And I think that's a challenging title to hold. My whole goal is I need to pave a way for others to come after me and have it easier than I did. And I think a lot of that exists within being on city council. I'm the second black woman that's ever been on the Portland city council. Um, and that is really important um, and it's a really heavy thing to, to carry, but I realized that I'm blazing a trail that didn't exist before and I have a responsibility to make more room for black women to come after me and diverse perspectives to come after me. And so I think in all of my spaces that I occupy, just existing in those spaces as the first and being a black woman that's an activist and speaks out about racial equity, um, it's really important because I hope that by doing that, we can have younger black women that can thrive and don't have to have those conversations if they don't want to. <laughs> um, the advice I have for the younger generations, I feel like it's also like the advice I give myself, which is just to keep going and keep taking up space and especially in the spaces that aren't created for you and I think of that being on city council like I was not supposed to be there it's not a space that is for you know like young progressive radical black women who are you know rooted in amplification of historically under-resourced voices that's not really like where I'm supposed to be but I'm there and I think that speaks to what we can really do as you know as young people and as as women with with different backgrounds and lived experiences so my advice is keep going keep taking up space um, but also celebrate joy and find your time to take, you know, take a step back and pour into yourself with the things that you like doing because it can also be a really exhausting place to be when you're fighting and advocating all day against people who want different things than you. Um, and I think my advice for the older generation is to just understand that we're taking up space um, and that we don't we would love to be invited to your tables, but that we will also just create our own tables if there's not space for us at yours. And, um, you know, the next generation is here and, and really Portland and Maine are, are changing and I'm, I'm very excited to see what we do and what happens. So I would just say buckle up because we're here. <laughs>
going to work, making new friends, learning, like seeing actually the nature too, like I realized how beautiful a place it is. And so now, 15 years later, it's a completely different environment. Obviously, a lot of people have come here and have seen what I have seen and they love it as well. And, you know, moving here and I'm very excited about it. So if you ask me, uh, 15 years ago what I would envision Maine to be like it would definitely be a different answer than today. Uh, I see it as a potentially maybe a, some sort of a tech or educational hub in the future. I have a kid that's grown up here, um, I'm very excited for his future here. Uh, if again, if I had him 15 years ago, I would probably envision him going to college elsewhere, uh, but now I would be excited for him to be here. Uh, Ukrainian specifically, I would say, is relatively small as a community here compared to other states, uh, such as like Florida or even Massachusetts, you go there and there is many, many, like there's a bigger community of Ukrainians, but uh, the ones that are here, we all pretty much know each other and we all support each other as much as we can, uh, support each other, not only here, but also our families outside of the country. Yeah. I'm so thankful, like even just driving with my mom, um, you know, I, I, when I was picking her up, it was, uh, I think, seven days into the war and it was the first time after it started that I actually slept as when she was here, I couldn't sleep for days, it was very, very difficult. And so when she got here, it was kind of like a breath of, uh, you know, release, a relief a little bit. And But she was still stressed and I just took her like for a ride, you know, around I live in Cape Elizabeth, so around there, and uh, practically every second house had a Ukrainian flag on it, and it just, it's it still, <laughs> every time I drive it, like, it just warms my heart because uh, to know that you're not alone. I'm big on the geography of Maine. Um, I love the Four Seasons, and um, unpopular opinion is that I really, I don't mind the winters, driving in it can be a little tough, but the winters are okay. Um, but I also just love the community of Portland. I love how, like for example, this charity, but also so many different programs and stuff have a highly focused like community-based work and community-based building. And I just love that about Maine. And I feel like, you know, um, we can only grow from here and expand to other communities in Maine um, as we are doing in Portland. But yeah, I just love that factor and I can't wait to see uh, what the future of Maine holds. I really like that, you know, there is a great public schools open for anyone, for any child to have an opportunity to a great education because I believe that, you know, education has impacted me in such a positive way. Um, it kept me open to learning and growing, but also understanding the importance of helping one another because, you know, there are so many people on this earth and there are so many people in this community alone um, that, you know, have different stories and perspectives. And education has taught me the value of that um, and how extraordinary, um, how extraordinary these perspectives can be for your own learning, but, you know, growing as a community because we're all human at the end of the day. And it's best that we help our community and we help one another grow, not just ourselves. Why I am optimistic about my generation, especially the start of the social media generation, um, that we spread information, we talk about perspectives, we talk about issues, and we don't just shove that under the rug and we, you know, it might be uncomfortable, but a lot of learning comes from being outside of the comfort zone and I think that my generation is understanding that and we're gonna be the future and hopefully make it a more positive future. Being a first generation college um, student, it can be a lot whereby you try to get the support from your parents, whereby they have three jobs, two jobs, and still find a way to still support the family. I was able to, you know, get a master's degree, a bachelor degree, because that was the dream and prayers from, you know, my parents to, you know, if they can't accomplish this, they want their children to be able to accomplish what they were unable to accomplish. And uh, my career goal was to be an academic advisor. Right now, I'm an academic advisor at USM. I went to North Shore Community College, and um, my guidance counselor was white. And then coming to Maine, my guidance counselor was also white. 
you know, where there's a problem, they want to run to somebody to talk to, they might not have the connection on how to communicate with, you know, another race. But I see myself as a point of contact whereby, oh, Shady's there. I can go talk to Shady about, you know, this problem because I've, I've been there and I understand the struggle whereby I'm one of many that have, have accomplished something great in America. I'm one of many that have benefited from the America dream. There are still more that are gonna accomplish this. I believe the government, the local councillor, the Senate, or whoever is in position, I believe and I strongly believe you guys have the power to do what's right for, you know, for the community. It would be awesome to please and please let's support and help out your fellow human being. Please. Okay. So my family um, and I, so we had to leave Russia and um, not having a particular detailed plan in place, we uh, moved to the U.S. in general and uh, Accidentally, we found ourselves in Maine. I'm currently HR director with one of uh, Maine's nonprofits, uh, and I've been in HR uh, back in Russia. So, uh, generally, uh, I mean, the total experience is about eight, 15 years now in HR. And again, thankfully, I was able to um, to continue building my career here in Maine. Finding the community. Uh, that would understand what we were going through was uh, relatively easy. I wasn't looking for, um, let's say, Russian-speaking community, uh, and also due to the fact that our, my own family is uh, kind of international. Like my husband uh, is from uh, Congo, D Congo DRC, so he has his community here. Uh, however, again, both of us are really open, so we don't have, we're not looking and have never been looking for any particular community in regards to, you know, the country of origin. So we're uh, mostly open to anyone and, uh, and of course, when you're um, talking to other immigrants so you can definitely find things a lot of things in common regardless what country in particular you're coming from i need to be honest this is probably the first time i've ever uh, felt um, uh, you know that feel of shame uh, for my country and that was the first time when i um, started like pausing <laughs> you know while answering the question where are you from uh, that really never happened before and um, that's uh, a very um, hard experience for myself and i know for a lot of community members we moved here from the democratic republic of congo in 2014 and ever since being here we've just been welcomed by the community and just everyone and it's just been a great place to live a lot of my friends myself and my family like my siblings we used to go to the boys and girls club and there were a lot of immigrants just like us from congo from uh, south africa from angola and sudanese people as well so it's just really an interesting mix and pot and so just seeing all these different people made us feel more welcome in terms of Look at all these other people that are just like us. And when we were at the Boys and Girls Club and even at the shelter, we used to get invited to many of these different main families that just wanted to know who we are. Uh, at church, at the cathedral here, church community over there is great. And a lot of the members like knowing and meeting new people. And so those were really some of the ways we got integrated and some of the ways people showed their kindness towards us as well. So I'm studying computer science, which is also called software engineering in the real world. Uh, I'm hoping to be a software engineer as well myself and I'm hoping to also start my business maybe. I know opportunities are rising and will come. I want to stay close to my family and the people that I know and the community of Portland, Maine because it's so diverse and it's also a great place to just like live overall and my advice would definitely be open to meeting new people and especially Mainers. I know a lot of us in our own communities even when we get here we like to stay closed off a lot of times when we hang out with our people, or you Congolese, or you Rwandese, or you from Angola and whatnot, our people, 
but I think it's definitely a beautiful thing when you start to experience these different groups of culture and learn the way that they do life and how they're traversing this earth. And what. My mom say this a lot, so I have to say this. Don't lose your language at all. Everyone has been saying me this. Like literally everyone, my mom says, you shouldn't lose your language. And everyone is like, yeah, you should listen to your mom. But yes, not losing your language is very important. It's really gonna help you a lot. Just knowing two languages is really awesome. And it really puts you a step ahead with most people. So, yeah. I am a sophomore at USM and I'm a political science and international relations major. Uh, my parents are both from El Salvador, but I was born here in Portland, Maine, and I've lived here all my life. I think one of the biggest struggles I've faced in Maine is probably just having to assimilate. Um, growing up in mostly white classrooms and white neighborhoods, I think it was very hard to find people who were similar to me, but once I started growing up and finding people who had a very similar experience here in Portland as me, it was very easy to um, like pursue the activities and things I really cared about. Um, I think education is probably one of the biggest um, influencers in my life. Um, I think I had the opportunity to go to um, very open-minded schools that had um, like a very progressive curriculum and I know not everyone in the state and the country has that opportunity and I think my education um, here in Portland really gave me the opportunity to explore my leadership like capabilities um, and then I think as far as it impacts my family um, I know both of my parents only had the chance to graduate from like the equivalent of high school in their countries um, so I, I'm really grateful for the opportunity I have here in Portland to um, like build my education and build like my future family's um, I guess possibilities just through my education. I think one thing that gives me hope um, in Portland is just how many movements and opportunities are that are being created to help um, with like the housing crisis and ensuring that people aren't being evicted from you know their homes as we have like all these new. Um, I don't know, like apartments and complexes and just properties being uh, pushed into Portland. So I think I'm optimistic in the fact that we're not just a community that's going to let people slip through the cracks and that we're not going to push them out of Portland. Um, and I think like groups like Catholic Charities, but also other like smaller organizations in Portland do give me that optimism. I think my biggest advice is to just be able to take a step back even when things are heated, even when things seem impossible, even when differences just seem too big to overcome. I think just being able to take a step back and recognize the fact that we're all humans and that we're all coexisting in the same space is probably my biggest advice. And then from there is just recognizing and honoring your values as a human. Um, I think my biggest struggle was just um, being able to come to terms with the things that I care about and the things that are important to me. But once you take that step and accept that there are issues in this world that you really deeply and truly care about, um, it becomes way easier to work with other people um, from there.